pod where people are our passion that lead us to our purpose. I'm Pastor Russell. I'm Emmanuel. And I'm Sandy. And we're coming to you live from the spacious, luxurious, basic, plain <laughs> studios of Mount it. Zion Baptist Church. It can be luxurious and spacious and plain all at the same time. It gives a good vibe. Sure. Uh, but coming to you live from Jonesboro, Georgia, we appreciate you guys joining us. As always. Uh, welcome. Like you said, back, back at it again. Trust in the process is our theme. Last week we talked about Lot and how Lot didn't quite immediately trust the process. He kind of drug, drug his feet, took his time. Kind of. <laughs> the man just, just <laughs> didn't even warn his family. You're right. The man <laughs> negotiated. Like, can we just do it? How'd yeah. that work out for him? And it it did work out. It just <laughs> it just didn't work out immediately for him. That's right. um, long Ooh. story short, his it worked out for it for him for him. <laughs> yeah, his, his wife not so much. His wife kind of stuck in the stayed in the past. Mm-hmm. But um, this week, a little bit different. We're going to look into Abraham and how Abraham did decide to trust the process immediately, as opposed to Lot's choice of. I'm just going to... Uh, something that never came out of our discussion. I'm thinking now, like, your husband's a terrible leader. Like, doesn't do anything good. <laughs> we didn't even think her Didn't teach you in such a way that you know not to look back. Yeah. He gets away at the end and, like, it's fine, and you're a pillar of salt. <laughs> yeah. It, but it's his fault. But he's out. That's out. We missed that part last time. Yeah, we, 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 we dropped the ball on that <laughs> one. We didn't, we didn't even put in her perspective. Husbands got a lot. I mean, we get a slide. Husbands get a little pass. Well, I mean, it, a lot... <laughs> Put it this way, a lot weighs on the man's shoulders. <laughs> so much so, your wife may turn this off. <laughs> but, but Lot didn't quite follow the process. He took his time. But this week, we're going to talk about Abraham, how Abraham did decide to accept God's promises, listen to him, and follow the process immediately as opposed to waiting and dragging his feet. Mm-hmm. So, but before we do that, how, how are we doing? How, Other how, than the hair color, Sandy, what's new in the life? Facts. Mm. Y'all peep the hair. If Which y'all know we, what color red that is, please let us know. Well, we learned a little right secret now. earlier, not to cut her off, but we know she's a, a home brewer of hair dyes. <laughs> a home brewer. <laughs> a mixologist. Mix- there you go. I like that. Uh, well, dye. Home brewer di- made me sound like a witch or something. Well, mixologist <laughs> sounds like your bartender. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But she mixes dye. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, what's new? I started playing badminton. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, really? Yeah. I love badminton. Uh, but yeah. I learned that I've been playing badminton wrong all my life. Wait, what do you mean? That's the wrong way? We finally looked it up just because we wanted to see the official rules. You hit the thing over the net. (laughs) There's more to it. (laughs) Oh, but wait. Totally more to it. And we've been playing with the wrong net, too. Oh, no. Usually it's like we thought it was high like a volleyball, right? Yeah. No, it's short like a pickleball net. Kind of taller, but so y'all been playing on a volleyball net, right? (laughs) Which I I think growing up as a kid, that's what they always do. Nobody has a, a regular. Pickleball wasn't a sport. That's as what a kid. I was saying. So we were playing it wrong the whole entire time. So we huh. had to relearn how to do it. I get a text from way. Sandy about three weeks ago that says, "Hey, can I play? Can I play badminton on the softball field?" And I'm like, um, "Yeah, sure. What are you doing?" And she's just like, oh, "We're just bored. We're gonna go do it." And I'm like, "You and Nara about to go play pickleball? I mean, a uh, bad. Yeah. All right. Yep. That's that's great. not that's, that's. I just not looked a sport over at Heather and just said, uh, "I've never been there." And she's like, "Where?" I'm like. That to the board. point where go we have nothing to do. We want to go play badminton. <laughs> well, I love badminton. It's good. So that's to each his own. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. me. So who's better? You or your husband? Me? Yeah, of course. He's not here to defend himself. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, is, is, are you just saying that because he's not here? But <laughs> no. We'll give you the credit See for now. See me all in few. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be any good What's new in Emmanuel's life? <laughs> The deadline is almost over. Oh, my God. Praise I feel Lord. like we've been recording this podcast for year, like two years now, and every time we talk to E-Man, there's another deadline. But thank God this is, well... The hurricane messed things up. Okay. So, mm. the deadline is still ten fifteen <laughs> for all. It, it, Anybody purposes. listening? Yeah. But uh, no, deadline's over, so I'm getting happier at work. Okay. So that's always nice. nice. Wonderful. But life, other than that, life is good. Um, no complaints. Still happy with the accountant choice? Yeah. I heard someone say yesterday. I don't remember who it was. Now they were Actually. like, "Who? Actually. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Shout she out. was just like, "Not with it." No, she, no, she was been. with it. Oh. She's like, I should have been with it. Like, once I realized what my brother gets paid and uh, <laughs> but, what I get paid, she was like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but you can't look at it from a perspective of how much you get paid because if you do that. Yeah. I told her, I said, well, that's where you made mistake number one. You compared salaries. Never do that. Boom. What you're doing is for the Lord. Far more important. Mm. Very, and very. I tell myself. In your life. <laughs> tell now, my granted, the money, obviously everybody needs money, but that's not why. But, yes, I'm very happy with the yeah. choice of being an accountant. I, mm. I love 
what I do. She had to sacrifice her salary for mm. serving the Lord. There you go. That's what we're doing. We're big on sacrifice. No comment from the <laughs> producer over there. I was hoping we'd get something out of him. What's new with you? I heard, I heard October's a big month for October pastors. is a big, well, celebratory. I mean, it's Pastor Appreciation Month that I didn't even know. Apparently, it's every year, so I should put that on my calendar. Um, but this year, I tried to make a huge focus of everyone else. Mm. I had went to the committees and said, hey, celebrate me, yeah. But I want you to celebrate everyone else that works here when their anniversary comes, too. And so this one kind of snuck up because I was thinking about them. You know, that's a humble brag, thinking about other people. You know, that's how I roll. But, um, you know, it's good. My life is great. Uh, I was thinking, I don't know who I was with the other day, but I was saying I have literally no viable complaints. That's good. I can complain all day, but there's nothing bad. Yeah. God has blessed me with a family that is cool and healthy and daughters survive in college like, more than surviving, thriving. My son is going through those growing pains of being 16, and you get that nice. freedom where you're allowed to go away on the weekend, and today he learned that when you don't come back to church, that freedom could get taken away quickly. So right. stuff like that's happening in my life. Just being a dad, bro. <laughs> being a dad to not only my kids, like, I'm the pastors or dads of the church, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shepherds. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. For and sure. like Sylvia was saying today, like, uh, you know, the, I've been going through my personal life and, and this, that, and you were there. And like, that's it. I like all that. And that's cool to me. Like, it doesn't, that stuff doesn't stress me. Like, I love going through life with people and getting the calls that are random and, hey, I'm feeling this. Let's talk about that. What should I sacrifice for God? Stuff like that. I love all those things. To me, it's the administrative part of being a pastor that is... It's the, it's the everyday job yeah, part. Yeah, it's like the job part. Like the loving Jesus and going out with people part. It's easy. Love it. Yeah. Like God made me just for that. And if there were like somebody else that could do other stuff, I'd be rocking it. And then you got to come in there, sign some checks. I'm telling you. Do, it's do, not do, do you actually write out the sermon? It's like, yeah. okay, yeah. I, knew what, I knew what I wanted to say. <laughs> So just go out there and say, <laughs> no, life is good. Life good, is good, though. Good. That's awesome. Glad yeah. life is going well for both of you. Yeah. Always love that. Um, but like we were talking about, trust in the process. Uh, yeah. Talking about Abraham. We're going to read some scripture. They told me to change up my introduction to how we read scripture. I'm going to make it fun now. Where it's about to be spinning it to Sandy with scripture time with Sandy. Ooh, spinning it with Sandy. Spinning it. Right. Right. Like See, I told you to change it up on. Wickle, wickle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are in the book of Genesis. We are in chapter 22. Um, but before we get into the actual reading, just a little context of what's going on before. Genesis 22, um, which is the story of the sacrifice of Isaac. Um, and so the importance of Isaac um, we need to talk about um, is because God made a promise to Abraham that he will give him a son in his old age. And, you know, Sarah and Abraham was just like, ha <laughs> Good Wait, one. I, hold on. Well, you're funny. What do you mean? With, with, with that old age. <laughs> I, I think we're thinking like, oh, like oh, 40. You no, know, no. He was 100. Jeez. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 100 at the time. Now, imagine that. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, and I think. God come to you. Okay. You're about to have a daughter. Yeah, I'm 47. At, at, I'm out. You're about to have a daughter at 102. <laughs> yeah. What you telling God? Well. I mean, you're the guy, though. I'm the guy. So what is no, that? Sorry. <laughs> All right. No worries. You're 102. God come to you. Hey, you're about to have a, a, another child. Yeah. I'm going to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> In and, God's yeah. face. And Sarah did just that. Yeah. No um, doubt. And I think she was 90, it says, okay. when, yeah. when she just give a little. was told this. Um, so, yes, that's the importance of Isaac. Um, and even more important also is God promised Abraham, even before this, that he would be the father of all nations. And... Um, so have not being able to have a child, it's like, how can I be the father of all nations if I don't have a child? Yeah. So yeah. he kind of took matters into his own hand at one point and did some things with his um, servant, uh-huh. Hagar. Hagar. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but tried to do things his own way that way. That wasn't the plan and that wasn't the route. And so God told him, hey, I'm going to promise you to give you a son through Sarah. So trust me. Mm-hmm. And so... Here we are in Genesis 22, where we're going to see Abraham do just that. Genesis 22, verse 1 through 18. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am. He answered, take your son, he said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. So early in the morning, Abraham got up saddled his donkey and took him two of his young men and his son Isaac. He split wood for a burnt offering and set out to go to the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his young men, 
Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there to worship. Then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. In his hand, he took the fire and the sacrificial knife, and the two of them walked on together. Then Isaac spoke to his father Abraham and said, My father. And he replied, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Then the two of them walked on together. When they arrived at the place that God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He replied, Here I am. Then he said, Do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its thorns, horns in the thicket. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. So today it is said, it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your only son, I will indeed bless you and make your offsprings as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your offspring will possess the gates of their enemies. And all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because you have obeyed my command. Mic drop. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> First of all, I, if I put my, myself in Isaac's shoes, dad, <laughs> <laughs> you brought the wood, you got everything else. Where, where's, where's, I, the, where's the I sacrifice? feel the same because Isaac was around. He like knew who his dad worshipped. He knew that we, normally there's a bull or normally yeah, like, there's, a, usually there's an animal something with us, dad. We're traveling, what's up? <laughs> but no. He left the donkey over there. <laughs> right. But I, I, love, I love the fact that Isaac trusted his dad so much. And even to the point he got on the, the, the altar, because <laughs> once again, simple me. All right, we're here. My dad said, hey, get on the altar. For yeah. what? <laughs> well, no, <laughs> I'm not getting up there. But Isaac fully trusted his, his father, knowing who his father served. And even on top of that, Abraham trusted his father. I was going to say and that. And who, who he served. So Abraham like, took the wood for the burnt offering and he laid it on his son. I mean, in that moment, right? <laughs> I, uh, I'm just going to imagine his son like, all right, maybe they're changing is, it up this year. <laughs> like, hey, What is happening? Yeah, that, that, takes some, that takes some faith. Yeah, uh, well, random fact that we learned in verse 2, take your son, he laid, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. We were introduced earlier. That's the first time the word love was used. Is this the word love or just in general? Yeah, so well, love. Surely I thought before Genesis 22, somebody loves somebody. Surely, <laughs> somebody. But they didn't. God, loved the, God so loved the world that he, that's way better than John. Facts. <laughs> you got a good point. I was like, wow. Hey. Love comes way later. But yeah, that's pretty cool to know. So the first time that, that that's mentioned, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Yeah. Uh, and he just tells him what to do. Take the burnt offering. And Abraham, the point that we made with Lot was when Lot was given the news, when the angels of the Lord came to Lot, uh, the people were disturbed, obviously, and asking for them. But Lot himself... He says, go and tell your family and go and do all these things. And he like hesitated. Yeah. He didn't go and do it. And then when he did, they thought he was joking. His demeanor, his the way he led, his everything was different. Here it says, Abraham got to take your son, your only son. You love him, go here, offer him as a burnt offering. And it doesn't, there's no hesitation. Period. Next line. Yeah. So Abraham got up early in the morning. And, and it says he got his donkey and they went and he got ready to do this. There was no hesitation in Abraham. None whatsoever. I mean, and that two stories you, you you see once again hesitation how that trust how that pathway of trust in the process versus how okay immediately no hesitation i'm going straight to do i'm going to trust the process right mm -hmm. here in the moment and how it works out in i'm not gonna both favors yes i guess for a lot a tragedy did happen with his wife but so much more came out of that and i guess same same with isaac Big big things came out of trusting the process immediately, so I just love the fact that Abraham trusted God so much. He was like, "I know how things go." Yeah. <laughs> but how, what are you, what are your thoughts on how? I mean, like the faith that Abraham had to put like on God at that moment. Facts. That's pretty tough. But um, like he probably he believed that God would like. 
resurrect Isaac because we learn later in Hebrews 11, um, verse 17 to 19. Um, if you go and read there, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, that's some wild trust <laughs> yeah, right that, there. Right. That, is, that is trust to the nth yeah. degree. <laughs> yeah. So... I mean, mm-hmm. because he did make the promise that you're going to be a nation and all these things, but and, but I, and Isaac is obviously a part of that because for it to continue, right. he has to be a part. But I don't know that my simple mind would have went to, okay, well, God says it's the future and this is what's going to happen, so I'm going to sacrifice this. But he's got to bring him back or something because he promised it's going right. to be. Right. I would have never thought that. Yeah, I, that, that, I'm with you. That would have never crossed my mind as far as I'm going to be the father of many nations. Surely he's not going to tell me to kill my son. Right away. Now, if I kill my son. Yeah, the nations are no longer nations at that point. Right. Yeah, so that just shows how much trust he yeah. had in God's promises. Yeah, and um, in this instance, Abraham followed through. Yeah, I think I was asked a question a couple weeks ago. I told you guys this. Um, I think I told you this, but someone came to me and said, Pastor Russell, we feel this way. We feel like when you preach, it comes across like this, and we feel that that, and we're trying to do everything you're saying to do. And the question was, what are we not doing? Like, what are we not doing that you want us to do? And I was like, I could care less what you do. Yeah. And this is going to make a point. Most of the time for me and I'm, as a pastor, I just want your heart to be willing to do whatever God tells you to do. Yeah. And like right in this moment, God just wanted Abraham to be willing to take his prized possession, the thing he loved the most that was his promise late, late, late in life and make it offering like, OK, it's available, God. If you want that, it's available. Right. Um, and so just be the heart willing to do whatever God wants you to do. Because what I've learned is in my life, I will build it up to God wants me to go be Billy Graham. And I have to go (laughs) preach like Billy Graham and I have to act like Billy Graham. And I got to make sure when I preach, people are saved and all this stuff. And God has not called me to do that. God has just simply called me to be Russell. Uh, And he has not put on your heart or Sandy's heart, what he's put on my heart. And as you lead and like Abraham, that's what you know. So you do what you know God called you to do. And then God works out the details. Definitely. Facts. And it just goes to show you, once again, the ultimate sacrifice. He was asked to do the at that time, his ultimate sacrifice, your only son. Mm-hmm. First of all, you're going to have a kid 100, number one. <laughs> and not only are you going to have a kid, I guess, I don't know what age Isaac was at the time, but whatever age, I'm sure Abraham had plans in future. The same idea of father of many nations, oh, bet. Mm-hmm. I want you to, mm-hmm. you're going to be the next. Mm-hmm. But so much so, God's like, okay, now kill him. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Abraham was like, wait a minute, in his head. But because he had faith and trusted God so much, up to the point of taking the taking the knife. Well, back up. He built the altar. He we t- now him and his son walking up to the to the altar, talking regular son and father conversation. I'm sure they had talked more than just about what's going to happen. But I mean, like, there's a three day time period here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah I, mean, I can see him like to go think. sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Right. like immediately go sacrifice. But it's like, no, we're we're gonna go on this journey. Okay, me and my dad going on vacation. Imagine the mental dialogue he's yeah. having, he, Abraham's having in his head as he was just walking up to this. Class. Yeah, I mean the small talk was probably just very cheesy. Like, right. very, like, like so, uh, <laughs> how was dinner? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean the the amount of faith that takes, even up to the point of. He took the blade, and, and he was on the way down yeah. to it, to fulfill what God called. That right there, once again, I don't think my human self right now could. Yeah, I don't have any children, but I'm not. I'm not gonna kill my girlfriend. I'm not mm-hmm. gonna kill my my dog. <laughs> I mean, not just to put it in perspective. Mm-hmm. I don't think I. And it's, I, feel, I feel so bad because I'm like, why don't I have that faith? Yeah, in God, but it's like. God, I don't want. Well, I mean, you say that, but you might though, if if because in this moment it's let me go back to my scripture. I pulled up my notes. It says that after these things, God tested Abraham, and He said to Abraham. So somehow He was verbal yeah. or audible to Abraham. God. Yeah. <laughs> so if you hear the voice of what you think is You're God, right. and He says, "I want you to take your dog or your whatever and sacrifice it," you might. Like, right now you wouldn't because, like, we're just saying Yeah, it. you're right, you're right. I got you. I don't know. I never thought about that until you... But what, what does that even sound like? And Yeah. I, how did I don't he... know. I don't know how I would respond to God with that one. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, once again, they're on a three-day journey. 
Abraham had so many opportunities, and I'm sure they passed animals, to <laughs> basically, once again, take into his own hands the process. He, did, he already mm. tried that once. And the fact that he learned from his previous mistakes, I think that also speaks a lot about Abraham's faith. Yeah. He understood, okay, yeah, I remember when I had the keys. Uh, the car didn't start. <laughs> but now, now that God told me, okay, the keys are here. Here's how to do it. I'm, I'm going to sit in the passenger seat. I'm going to take the passenger roll. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my son all the way here, and then I'm going to sacrifice yeah. my son. And like you said, with the knowing fact, even if he did, yes, God will raise him again. But I, I just know that's, that's a big faith move. <laughs> yeah. I mean, surely, like, when Abraham was doing this in the moment, he never really realized that this is just God. God's just testing me. <laughs> let, me let me go. But we know as readers, we get, we get the mm-hmm. amazing blessing to be able to understand this ahead of time just through Abraham's story that the reason that God asked him to sacrifice his son was just to test him and to see his faith and where his heart was at. And then... Uh, a lot of the times that God is just wanting to see if we are willing to do mm-hmm, and yeah. kind of test our faith. So has there ever been a time like in your life, in your walk with God, like that you've had to sacrifice? Yeah, Maybe not so much like Abraham. Yeah, not, yeah not, nothing to the degree of Abraham. But I mean, and this, we were talking before we got on camp on, on online sacrifice and the difference between what is a sacrifice today versus a sacrifice that, like like Abraham. I think me personally, I mean, I had to sacrifice my own personal ambitions, my own personal what I where I see Emmanuel, I'm obviously I'm only 26 years old. I'll just speak of when I went to high school. I saw Emmanuel playing in the NBA. Mm-hmm. I had to sacrifice you that. Still do in dreams. In my in my dreams. <laughs> I do. And I and I love the fact that God I'm going to give you that one, you but I'm it. never going to let you see it in reality. <laughs> but in, in um, true respect, that I had to sacrifice my own personal ambitions. Yeah. I thought I was going to, I'm, I'm going to Duke University yeah. to play for Coach K. Oh, man. Emmanuel never made it to Duke University that. to play for Coach K, long mm-hmm. story short. But God has blessed me. Yeah. God has kept me. God has kept me through it all. And so, I mean, I think we look at it as sacrifice like, Man, I can't. I'm not gonna go. Ki- I'm not gonna go kill Elijah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, but I'm pretty sure you have sacrificed yeah. time, ambitions, and so you name it. Yeah. So how have you? I, uh, I wish you would have talked to me more when I was your youth pastor. Because if I would have known you were trying to get to Cameron Indoor, I would have prayed <laughs> way hard for that. Because Duke was my team yeah. back in the day, and Coach K was the man. So man, we would have, man. we would at least took a visit there. <laughs> I did, I did go a visit oh, my senior year. Ouch. When, when I didn't make I, it there either, Sandy. So, ouch. I was, we were close. My <laughs> senior year, we were real close. We were. Probably went to lunch 10 times. I'm just saying. Oh, never man. heard about Duke until now. Really? Just now. Yeah, that was Sad. Much, we'll talk about this Sad. <laughs> Abraham would have talked about it with Isaac. <laughs> we would have that conversation. I think what we see in this process, too, Sandy, affirm this one. Uh, what, what, what we are faithful in many times is really, it's not always for you and I. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Like many times. It's like the people around you see it, whether it's family, whether it's strangers, whatever it may be. But the blessings come because of our obedience. And also in reflection, of, like in the opposite of that, the other side of that coin, in our disobedience, that also has an effect on the people around us. And so when we start talking about sacrifice, I guess this all goes together. Um, being called to be a pastor, uh, however many years ago, there was a moment where I'm sure that Heather had to come to the realization that my time was going to be different, mm-hmm. that I would have to sacrifice time at home and time or whatever, and she would have to take up that end of it. Um, yeah. And never once has she ever mentioned it, complained about it, talked about it, but I know it's something that is there. Yeah. And so you think about our call with Jesus and our call to trust God in these moments. It is for us because we're all growing, but so many times I believe God is working outside of us, and he's just letting us be the... Abraham, that's like, yeah, I'm willing, and I'll sacrifice it all so all of you guys can see that God is good. Definitely. What do you take out of that, I guess, is the question. Like, what, what do you take away from knowing that what you choose affects other people? <laughs> yeah. <Oppressive>. Yeah, facts. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, because, you know, in ministry, it, it involves more than just, like, me. <laughs> it's so many other people's lives that are involved and even in our current situation at, ch- at church here um you know we've been praying a lot about our finances and all of these things and 
we know like God is going to fulfill the promise he says he's going to fulfill um but it's difficult to see in that moment and through all of that like God is definitely like of course he's testing us for sure as a church as individual people and I think once we get to like the point of growth and like what Wayne Chang talked about those fruits of the spirits and stuff like that is when we'll see like the promise I mean, maybe we won't see the promise. <laughs> in my, in my, I'll probably not be here to see it. Um, I'm gonna go quit and go to Virginia. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I completely understand what, that as far as like, there, the promise that we think we're supposed to see isn't all. We may not see that promise. I think from yeah. pastor's per- perspective, yeah. you talk to multiple youth all the time. Yeah, and of course you want all those youth to come to to know Christ in your lifetime. But I think the hard part is when you have to realize. They're human. Yeah. They ha- they're getting to make their own choice. Yeah. But your job is to plant that seed. Yeah. So, like, when you think about sacrificing and what does it mean, and we had, like, a, a hearty conversation mm-hmm. before we started about is it a sacrifice or is it a surrender? Are they the same thing? Who knows? You're right. I have to sur- I have to sacrifice. I'm going to use Andre's term. I'm sacrificing my expectations of that kid ever knowing Jesus in my lifetime to maybe I won't. God, if it's in your will. Yeah. So in my life, I'm going to just stick with Andres. I'm not going to go against the grain here. What if I had to personally sacrifice to walk with God? Uh, weed, um, strip clubs, uh, heavily drinking alcohol, um, hanging out in groups of people that are looking for anything to do other than what is godly, because that's just lame. And that's just, do you really believe that stuff? Yeah. Stuff like that. And this is my struggle. Are those sacrifices, like those are all yeah. fun things. And I am giving them up. I read sacrifices as Isaac, as um, big time, yeah. as like things that I really care about and then like are not going against the Holy Spirit of God. Um, but the definition of sacrificing would say that anything I give up to get to something better is a sacrifice. And so in that regard, I'll play along. And I think that I'm sacrificing those things because if in my core, maybe this is what Andre's saying, in my core of my sinful flesh, I think that drugs, alcohol, and being in situations that are like that are better. Now, I'm not, I don't think that now, but yeah. there was a moment when I thought that. And so, yeah, I had to sacrifice that and give it up um, because God is so much more. And so things I, that, that, that's what I had to give up. Now it's switched. As a pastor, I have to give up of my time. Yeah. Like there are moments where I don't want to. I tell, you, I tell you all that all the time, and I feel terrible about it because I'm like, <laughs> you should be giving up your time. You're the pastor. Okay, but I'm a human. <laughs> yeah. Feel me on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and time is a lot. Um, expectations is a lot. I give up a lot of that. And and just, I guess my everyday, just living life is Russell. Mm-hmm. I kind of just, I don't give up sounds bad. But I just don't worry about it. Wherever God leads me into, whatever God puts in my path, and I try to stay in tune with him and all that. And I think all of that is a sacrificing of my will. And so how do, when you hear sacrifice and surrender, how does it? What could you've done both in your life? You sacrificed and surrendered. Are they the same? Do you vibe any different with either one? I mean, I feel like it goes in it the same. It goes in tandem. Like sacrificing and surrendering is one in the same strand. Um, but I understand like the point you're making, where it's like sacrificing weed sounds <laughs> wrong or weird to be giving up to the Lord to like use as something to change me. But then there's the other hand where it's like, maybe weed is my identity. Maybe that's what I revolve my life around. And that's just my lifestyle. And so that giving up that is super hard. And that is a sacrifice ultimately, but you surrender that sacrifice so it's like sacrificially yeah, yeah. Sac- <laughs> sacrificially <laughs> surrender yeah. in tandem in my opinion but no I mean list, all those things you've listed um, yeah. are sacrifices for sure common there's a common sacrifice because yeah. I also my, yeah. my list of things was like time family friends yeah. my own self because mm-hmm. it's like uh, Sundays when I have to go and do something I don't want to go and do it. I mm-hmm. want to go home and watch football and just <laughs> yeah. chill out and rest because this is the day the Lord that made and mm-hmm. told me to rest. Yeah. But, you know, I have to sacrifice my want to 
do that and go and serve the Lord and do open gyms and do the things that are of the Lord, which I should be grateful <laughs> and happy right. to do, yeah. right? But it's Definitely. just like your own selfish desires truly like... So, yeah, you know. facts. And I, I think about that on Sundays. They were asking me, do you want to cancel open gym? Yes. <laughs> like, I don't even think about the, the positivity of like uh, reaching people with the gospel. It's like, I don't want to be it's there. Like, I got to be here. So, yeah. so there's someone even out there that's listening that's like, listen, I want to sacrifice that. I hear you guys all that. You guys are churchy people. Y'all yeah. know all that. Mm-hmm. How do I, Mr. Sinful Guy, walking down the road, Google the podcast, here it is, you, what makes me want to change and sacrifice my fun? What's, that, what's the better I'm trying to get to? The the only answer is Jesus at the end of the day. One, and the, I know that's the church answer, but the only way to know that is once again, we're, I think our ongoing thing, trusting that process, but also understanding you have to have a relationship with him. And once that relationship is built and is nurtured, those sacrifices, they don't, at that point, it's like, I have to do this because my heart no longer seeks after that. Yeah. I don't want to be in this group, friend group that all they do is looking for trouble. This friend group that all we, every Saturday we're doing the same stuff. That, but mm-hmm. I'd rather be seeking out, like uh, Dwayne Chain said, I'd rather be seeking out the fruits of the Spirit. I want to be nurturing those. I want to be pruning off those bad and so that new fruits of the Spirit can grow in its place. But at the same time, it's like, if I'm the regular, regular sinner every day, it's kind of like, it's just weed. Yeah, It's not that bad. Yeah. And, and to some people, that's, that sacrifice is like, Weed. Some people it's alcohol. Some people it's time. But everybody's sacrifice looks different. But at the end of the day, if your heart posture, once again, is lined up with God, that sacrifice, you understand your sacrifice is okay. Yeah, that was separating me from fully having that working relationship with God. So I think that, that's the way I look at it. Me, like um, for me, like in terms of Gen Z, you kind of just have to lock in. Like mm. Um, mm. it's like kind of. For me, I said this last time in the podcast, you have to love the Lord more than you love any of all of those other things. Mm. Hard call, but yeah. that's just straight up facts. That's what you kind of have to, for, not force yourself, but. Surrender you yourself to, to do. Yeah, and it's going to take discipline and time and stuff. It's just like going to the gym. Like, I am a gym goer, and I go like every single day. And You're a gym rat. You have, I am. You have to lock in in order to see results. If you want to grow muscle, lock in and eat the protein, yeah. eat the amount of this and that and that, work out three, five times a week, you definitely have to sit and hone in and just straight. Literally lock in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the same thing as like trying to give up, sacrifice the things of that's truly just like your nature. Yeah. It's like. Definitely. So I think it's for, not easy. Yeah. And I think for all of us, like the, the so what are the like real things you can do? Like line them up. Like uh, I'm a sinner. I need to get back. One, find a church that preaches Jesus. Definitely. That's what you said. Right. Like just find somewhere that preaches the truth. Um, how do you know what the truth is? Read it. Do they say what you read in the word? If they do, then it's the truth. I mean, it's find Jesus for one. Associate yourself around people that are trying to get to where you're trying to go. This is for Christianity, this podcast, yes, and it's for Jesus, but that's in any walk of life. You're trying to be a good basketball player. You hang around good basketball players. If I'm trying to be a better pastor, preacher, I hang around people that do that. We talk about it. We figure it out. Mm -hmm. When you're jamming with musicians, you're learning from one another. Oh, how would you do that? Oh, what is this? How can I learn to do this? And so it's like real life things that you can do. And then once you get in that mode and once you surround yourself with those people, God begins changing you from the inside out and your desires are different and your thoughts are different. And then you start being like, well, that wasn't a sacrifice. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm going to sacrifice my heart now to God. Now I'm understanding the difference. Now I'm mm-hmm. understanding like the difference between just, oh, I'm going to give up some ungodly thing for God and make myself feel holy and be like, oh, I sacrificed that. Great. You stopped smoking crack. You're awesome. Now like go let God use your life. Now that's, now you're sacrificing and not just giving up. So those are just like, Things you know, for me in my own life, me and God have had a, a thousand things that I've been like, nope, that is not my thing, God. I know you're telling me to do that, <laughs> but I do not yeah. agree with you. Yeah. And I've seen it go both ways. When I answered the call to be the pastor, um, I saw this, what the the turmoil it put in my spirit when my immediate answer was no, and then I also saw the peace in my in my spirit when the answer was maybe. Mm. I don't even know God, but maybe there was just like a you're you're, you're trusting me, you're you're like following me, you're going, you're doing. For you, I'm sure there had to be a moment somewhere in Savannah State where you're like, Duke ain't it. <laughs> like, like, Coach K's not calling. Man, 
year one. And you had to follow that. And how has that affected the, not only you, but the people around you? It, it allowed me to grow in different areas. I think, obviously, I had ambitions in high school and going and transition from high school to college. Yes, I was around the game, but in such a different capacity. Mm. I mean, I was a manager for a D1 school. Mm -hmm. Never have I sat on the bench. <laughs> now, granted, gr granted, I sat on the bench without a jersey. Yeah. I'm, I'm in polo. I mean, you can see E-Man on the sideline, Sandy, like with his three high school championship <laughs> rings. Like, anybody need any water? Yeah, like, I, mean, <laughs> I see that. I, 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 and, and funny enough, it's like it's the most humbling no doubt. experience. Because I'm like, I'm talking to these athletes. They're like, oh, blah, blah. I'm like, man. <laughs> and I had a, I, I, one of the players went to, like played against me in high school. He's like, why didn't you come? Why didn't you play? I'm like, dude. This ain't me. <laughs> but it was one of those experiences where I was like, God, what? Y yes, I love the game of basketball. But maybe I'm not supposed to be playing the game of basketball yeah. on that stage. That doesn't mean, and this is what my coach often tell, told me, it doesn't mean you're not supposed to be impactful with the game of basketball. Matt, my biggest motivators were coaches or managers or somebody else. It was never the player. So was there ever a time like when you were not going to make it at Duke and all that, and you're like, God, I don't even know if I trust, you know, did that make you doubt what God was Absolutely. doing? Man, I think, I think right before I accepted that I was going to go to Savannah State, I was like, man, God, I don't, you made a mistake. Because <laughs> I, I mean, in all, in all honesty, I, I didn't receive any film like, hey, yeah. we're interested in you. I, yeah. I didn't get that. Yeah. I didn't get, hey, even to the point you got accepted to these schools. I didn't get none of that. Yeah. I was like, God, I don't mm, want to be at home this all up. Day. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've been applying. What did you what did yeah. you do wrong? Yeah. And it wasn't until I took a visit and it was it wasn't anything about basketball, but I was so comfortable with where I was and I think that God gave me so much peace knowing that, hey man, he was walking with me and it was one of those I it, I, I didn't hear him, but it was like, I got yeah. you. And I was on campus as a senior in high school at the time, like, man, I could be here. Yeah. Forget basketball. Yeah. And I, that, that right there gave me comfort knowing after making that decision of accepting, like, okay, I, I, I'm, basketball's not it, but God, you still got me. Mm -hmm. And I could trust and take, take that and know that I'm, I'm going to be good. So that was where I fell at the time. I think that's the hardest thing for me personally, at least. Um, when what makes me question God is like when God makes me sacrifice a good thing mm. for another good thing. <laughs> it's yeah. like, but this is good. Yeah. Why right. do I have to give, like, give this up? Because even for Abraham's example, his son was good, mm -hmm. but God was calling him to sacrifice this good thing for the other good thing. Mm -hmm. And the part of deciding what is the part that's like, are you sure? Lord, mm -hmm. um, I have plenty of examples of that, but I've, I've shared this one before, I think, is the whenever I moved from Virginia to here, Georgia, you know, I, church was good there, life was good there, yeah. everything was good, and then God called me to come to Georgia. You know, it's just <laughs> Wait like, a minute, why you say it like that? You're not even from Georgia, and that was kind of offensive. I am feeling offended. <laughs> Love you, Georgia. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that, to me, was so hard to just come to terms with, because... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved my life back in Virginia. I mean, I still want to eventually get back there. Um, that's how much I loved it. But mm -hmm. God was asking me to give that up and sacrifice that. And I was like, okay, yeah, if you say so. So I did. And, uh, you know, I felt like leaving. Came, I said it, it actually turned out to be a better thing me leaving Virginia than me seeing. Yeah, I think, like, it was interesting to me because you had said, like, when I left, I was like, well, how's the praise team going to go on? <laughs> like, I'm the, yeah. I'm the worship leader. Like, how, who can step, take my place? Right. And she's like, when I went back, it was, so when I went back, it was actually better. I don't know if that says about me, but <laughs> right. I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, right. I don't want to leave Mount Zion because I don't want to come back and be like, man, that new preacher is killing it. Like, that guy's way <laughs> that, better than yeah. me. Definitely. I know. I think comment, like, today, in today's world, I think that we would be tricked into creating idols out of things that aren't bad, like you're saying. Um, for me, the number one thing I see, and I think it's the culture we live in, family, mm -hmm. is the number one thing that people idolize over God. Um, and you think you're doing a good thing, which you are, but it's just like if you're not leading your kids to church or you're not putting the value of that in there, then being involved in family is you're not leading them the right way. Nice. So I think family is good. People always say money and jobs, which I see that from time to time. But I think money and my own schedule are the two things that, like, 
are above everything else in like people's worlds. Uh, they we say this, and I hate saying it, but it's like you plan your life. And plan your life, and then be like, oh, and we can go to church two Sundays this month, mm. at, two Sundays this sun- yeah. week, a uh, month out of the you whatever, uh, or go like, no, we have church every Sunday, <laughs> you know, and I volunteer for this on whatever day, and so yeah. where can the other things fit in? Just a priority type thing. Definitely, I, I think when it comes out, I think I idolize me personally. I think we're all guilty of this. My time uh. and. I thought you just said I idolize me personally. No, I thought you were well, I mean, <laughs> I you my were time. I, that, that's yeah. mine. Yeah. I mean, mm. in re- in respect, yeah. it's like, okay. Like you said, I'm going. To, I go to church from this time to this time. <laughs> now you impede on that time, we don't have a problem. Yeah. But I think when you fully embody the fact that God wants all of that. Yeah. And one and you start and once you realize that it's not your time anyway. It's. Mm. If you give it to God, that's a hard. I mean, and that, and for me to this day, still one of those things I I struggle with. Yeah, time. It's hey, let's go hang out. No, <laughs> I'm not hanging out. I'm good. Hey, let's go to this. No, I'm not. Don't even call me. <laughs> but even I'm guilty of church stuff. Like let's go to Oba Gym. I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'd rather not. <laughs> but when you start to realize that God loves you so much, He sent His Son. He didn't. He didn't say, "Oh, I don't have time for that." Mm. Even to the point where like. We ask for petty things and through prayer, through prayer, Lord, don't let it be traveling on the way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's listening to you. He's not saying, <laughs> I ain't got time for that. Mm. I got bigger things. You know, you know other things so going true. on. But I, I think for me, that's my biggest struggle as far as I, I, idolize, idolization. Yeah. I mean, you come up in the Cambodian culture and family is like a huge thing. Well, like, is that a thing? Like uh, idolizing family over? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, I mean, I don't think it's just. Cambodian culture. No, no, I'm just saying. I know that. I know that Cambodian culture is uh-huh. strong in family like that. I, I know that others are also. Yeah, yeah. But like some aren't as much as. Yeah. So I think that's just where I'm rooted. Yeah. And why it's so difficult to like yeah. break that. <laughs> For sure. We're always trying to take people from death to life. Absolutely. <laughs> and in the in the midst of death to life, when you're dying, um, you don't always know it, and things are always chaotic. In death, unless you know Jesus, and then it's way more smoother. And in in the Bible, uh, Jesus is constantly bringing bringing people from death to life. And in that process of death to life, everything inside you is changed, and your thinking and everything is radically changed. And so, where we come into it, like our time is something we haven't put to death yet. Right. Like we have not given that completely. We haven't sacrificed that completely yet. Our uh, my for me my. You should respond this way. Mm-hmm. I have not put that to death yeah. yet. And what Jesus is wanting us to do, kill all that stuff. It's all gone, and I'm the main thing, and what I'm going to do is redirect every bit of your core, every fiber of your being back towards me. And that's what he does. And so that's yeah. how we see, like, Abraham knew that, instilling it in Isaac. Isaac was trusting it, and all of a sudden, like, well, what's happening here? And then, I mean, imagine Isaac walking away from this situation. It's like, man, does my dad His really faith had to be so crazy. Like, look, we were about, I was about to be the sacrifice, yeah. and God put that. You would never believe it. There was this ram over in the bushes. You're not going to believe this. Him right. telling the story, like, someday down the road. And so his faith had to be. I wonder if he had trust issues. Yeah, I, was, I bet he did. Had to. Had that. Anytime trust issues. Abraham said, "Hey, let's go for a walk," nope. you're like, "Whoa, I'm good. Hold on, bro. Got some sheep in the what, pasture." What did God say to you? Yeah. So, yeah. speaking of life to death, uh, our special word for this week is, and if you're a listener out there of our three Ps on a pod, uh, listen. You hear this word? Uh, you send in. I don't know. Andre's going to do some kind of contest. He's going to do a message. Maybe for the church only. It'll be for the church only. All right. So if you're listening, you go to Mount Zion. Sucker, you can't win nothing. <laughs> if you're a church member and you hear this, then Andre's going to have a little uh, competition for you. But the word of today is write it down. Remember it. Type it in your notes. Lazarus, Lazarus. one that went from life to death. Yeah, Lazarus went mm. too. It's That's a good story. What Abraham thought God was going to do with <laughs> with, with Isaac. <laughs> yes, this is true. Yeah, he was like <laughs> he did it with word. Lazarus. <laughs> he can do it with Isaac. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. Wow. I love this. Uh, am I in charge of doing questions for the church? Or it's me? Okay. All right. So the next segment we'll have coming up, questions from the church. This question right here is going to trip you up. And when you start thinking about it, you're like, I hope not. But are your dead relatives watching over and can they interact with you from heaven? Because you always be at any funeral, I don't care where you go, they're like, oh, they're watching over you now. Mm. Yeah, that, I, that's, that's one of those we say, me personally, we say that. In times of grief, it's like, oh, they're in heaven watching over you. Prayerfully, they're in heaven. <laughs> uh, yes, that's that's a tough one because 
I mean, can they interact with you? Can I go? Can I go back and talk to my dad? No. I mean, I could be in my own mental and yeah, have moments of where the, oh, that reminds me of because mm-hmm. I, I think it's often like oh. Oh, my great grandmother's talking to me. The spirits are speaking to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with that because there there are memories that you have in your mind from relatives mm-hmm. who have gone, mm-hmm. and there are memories that still come back to your mind from those same relatives. Are those those relatives talking to you? I don't think so. I think that's God allowing allowing you to be like, hey, remember those good times? Yeah. But for instance, personal. My dad loved birds. Weird, weird people probably didn't know. Mm-hmm. We had a hawk that always came into mm-hmm. our area. And then when my dad passed, we always caught a raven, not a raven, a cardinal. Oh, yeah. A cardinal would come to my, after my dad passed, almost every day. Yeah. And, that, and that's one of those things where it's like, wow, in, from the question, my dad yeah. is watching me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. But I think God is allowing me to know. I like that. Yeah, he's in much a better place. I love that. Yeah. So he's not like your dad's not outside on the fence, being like, "You okay, <laughs> I man?" I see you, buddy. <laughs> but your dad instilled a, a core memory in you that he liked birds, and when now when you see a bird, you associate that with yeah. your father. So yeah. in a roundabout way, he's not watching over you. That God has given you like a connection to your dad. Yeah. Best, best way to say it. Another take on that. Um, it's an, a bird thing as well. Man, I gotta when, get a bird bird thing. <laughs> when Nara's mom passed, his dad. Um, told us like, hey, there's this bird that keeps coming by our house. I think it's your mom, and she's like, you know, talking, <laughs> Whoa. She, she's watching over me, telling yeah. me I'm okay, and this and this and that. And in my head, I'm just like, no, like, because then it goes into like the whole like reincarnation yeah. and like that's a whole like Buddhist like beliefs and all of that. Hindu, mm. maybe I'm not too. Right. Did you ask me? I don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. That falls under like reincarnation. We don't believe in that, and um, so it's definitely a sign. If it's a sign from anyone, it's a sign from God. It's not them in this form mm-hmm. giving you a sign. Mm-hmm. Um, but my my answer to this question is no. Um, they aren't watching you. Um, in my opinion, they're not because one, you don't know whether or not they even went to heaven. Like, who are you to? judge whether which way they went you know what i mean yeah. it could be in hell for all we know i don't know and <laughs> if they are in heaven i mean i'm pretty sure they're too busy like worshiping the lord yeah and to, to to like to be watching be worried about you in this sinful world they left it right they're yeah. in heaven i mean yeah um no comparison and then the whole uh, the other thing that people normally say is like oh heaven gained another angel um and that's not biblical because you know when it's like we aren't angels when we're born and when we die we still aren't angels the only angels that exist are already like are heaven, created are already yeah. created and we can't be angels ever so yeah the, mm. when people say heaven gained another angel it's like mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, all right not, not, I don't not think all the way so. <laughs> baby angel Someone baby else baby got their wings i love this we're all in agreement yeah. uh, the the scripture that andre shared with us deuteronomy 18:10 through 12 says this let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire who practices divination or sorcery interprets omens engages in witchcraft or casts spells or who is a medium or spiritist or who consults the dead Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord because of these same detestable practices. The Lord, your God, will drive out these nations before you. And so, you know, you could go to uh, someone reading your cards or someone telling your future and doing all these things. And this basically says anybody doing that is not of the Lord. That's not where that's coming from. And so you've heard it like there. I love that. Another angel got his wings today. No, they didn't. Uh, I just (laughs) shut them down right there. But you can't do that in that moment. Um, and, And I think about like, let's just take it on a whole different level. You and your significant other and your grandma's watching you. Oh, wow. I'm just saying, like, you're yeah, in the, rest, yeah, you you're in the restroom and your great-grandpa's there. <laughs> What's up, bud? <laughs> like, remember yeah. those lessons I taught you? I don't know. It's just like, I just don't think that they're watching over you. I, li- I love the concept, like what you're saying. God allowed us to have these memories and things with these people, and, they're, and, and we know what they like, we know what they didn't. And so when we see those things, 
yeah, it's going to remind us of him. But, oh, man, like, I think that's my dad. Like, you know, God put that there on purpose. Absolutely. Like, and, and God did probably put it there on purpose, but like not your dad, like Just coming back. There. I'm going to go. Right I'm going to be yeah. this raven or whatever you said. I'm going to be a bluebird or black red bird and land on the thing here. Yeah. Yeah, my definitely. grandmother would always say that whenever, because at my house, I don't know why now, there's a million redbirds, like always. Redbirds, really? bluebirds, it's just like uh, nature back there. But she <laughs> always says that red cardinals are family members like that are like coming back and visiting you and things. I've heard her say that. Maybe she put it on Facebook. I don't know. But, um, yeah, but yeah, so I'm out on that. But yeah, so the answer to the three Ps on the pod is no. no. Ne- negative. <laughs> no, now if you yeah. find that in Scripture and we're wrong, because there is going to be a day, and Andre and I had a great conversation. I think maybe y'all are here. There's going to be a moment when you get to heaven, and this is not the question, but are you going to get to heaven and you go, like, oh, dad, what's up? Or, oh, Uncle Bob, what's up? Mm. The scripture said there'll be a moment where we're all pulled together mm-hmm. in the heavens, but Andre's point is great. I love it. We all picture heaven as like up above us, mm. that like God does say he's going to make a new earth and a new heaven and a new thing. So Andre says like, uh, but won't we all just be living on this new earth and like in this new life where God is the thing and we're all just working? Will we have time to be like, oh, there's my grandma, there's my this? Or will we be these new spirits, new bodies? That's a good perspective. I don't know. It was a good thing. Yeah, Too deep a of a discussion for right now. But it was good. So I, I don't think they're, I think they're watching over you through God's protection. <laughs> I don't Agreed. think they're out there looking over you. That's so good. with that being said, that's, a, that's our question. If you have more questions, send them into 3Ps on a pod at uh, mzbc.org. Yep. And uh, we'll answer your question. But right now, we're going to switch it over to wise words from E-Man. Wise words from E-Man. I love that they, they keep me on this segment. Yeah. <laughs> they must mm-hmm. think I'm wise. But uh, no. Trust in the process is our theme. Um, I hate to be cliche, but we saw two clear pictures of trust in the process. Both trusted the process, but took their time. One took it immediately, one took their time. Um, If anything, just based off this story, we all have our own sacrifices that we have to surrender for for Christ. But like we all said, if your heart and your mind is set set on God, I guarantee those sacrifices, yes, they may hurt in the midst, but once you release them and allow God to work in you, those sacrifices, you realize, oh, this was detrimental. This was actually killing me. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, if you look at the story, God is so good. If you allow him, if you allow him and you trust him, he's going to provide. Yeah. He's going to give you that ram in the bush. Even in the midst of you're about to cut off that last sacrifice, mm-hmm. God is going to be, be your ultimate provider. And I think just from that story, you can take comfort mm-hmm. knowing that. Mm-hmm. God has a plan. God has a perfect, perfect picture for your life. Mm-hmm. Trust him and allow him to do it. Yeah. That's, that's the hardest part as humans. Allow God to work in you. And yeah, I guarantee he's not going to let you down. Facts. Yeah. And I think that the scripture says, Jesus said in John, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And as surely as I've gone to prepare, prepare a place for you, okay. I'm going to return and get you. Yep. And so like as we're guiding and living this life of, faith and trusting the process, not trusting the process. We fall. God picks us back up. He does us off. He sends us out. Uh, you know, it's not ever on us. What it does for me, and I'm sure it does for you guys, it gives us hope. It, it, it inspires us to believe uh, that Jesus is going to return, yes. that he's promised that he will come, that his eternity is eternity, that what he's doing in our life, whether we think it's a surrender or a sacrifice, he cares not, right? Like yeah. our, all the words. Now, now the whole discussion we have beforehand now are just coming to my mind now, and it's like, I don't care, sacrifice. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> just give it up. Yeah. But in that, there's so much more good if we will just trust the process that God has for our life. I keep falling on Jeremiah 29, 11, because I blocked it out of my life so much because it's read so much. <laughs> but it like keeps trusting. Trust the process takes me there mm-hmm. because it, I know the plans I have for you, plans to grow you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Yeah. And so there's like, there's a lot out there that God's already said. It's yours. Just trust me Just with trust it. Him. And so, yeah, I love that. Trust the process. Great. Yeah. Any other closing thoughts, friend? No. No, good. Awesome. So uh, like, subscribe. And like we said last week, more than like and subscribe, take the little, click on the little box with the arrow that goes like that. Like, I want to send this bad boy out. Yeah, send it to your granny. Send it to your aunts, your uncles that are traveling around. Uh, tell them to share it with their church yeah. uh, to invite us. We'll come speak. We'll set up on their stage. Facts. Do a little Q&A with three peas on a pod. How do y'all do it? Hey. We'll answer all the questions. Definitely. But you got to help us share it. You got to get it out there. We only go so far, uh, but you have limitless reach yep. on the internets. And so uh, we love you guys. We appreciate you listening. Like, subscribe, all those things. Until then, stay prayed up. Three peas on a pod. We should be-